So what happens uh, if a vessel is carrying a timber cargo and it develops a list at sea? So today we're going to talk about uh, this and in this video we'll be talking about the causes and the actions uh, when the timber carrying ship list at sea. The material for this video has been taken from the timber code mainly uh, chapter 6 of the timber code if I can be more specific. All right so if a list occurs uh, which is not caused by the normal use of uh, consumables found on the ship such as fresh water and fuel oil such a list can be probably due to either of the following three causes or a combination of these causes the three causes are shift in the cargo ingress of water and angle of flow so let's start talking about each of these causes. So the first cause is of course cargo shift. How can a cargo shift occur? So a major deck cargo sh will can shift and that will be readily apparent. So if the cargo shifts on the deck, that is readily observable to the observer. However, cargo may also shift inside the holes, which may not be so readily apparent to the observer. But of course, if the cargo on the deck has not shifted and we are sure about it, then the most plausible explanation of a ship suddenly developing list may be shift of cargo inside the hold. So what action should be taken if the cargo shifts inside the hold or on deck? Firstly, find out the location of the cargo shift. Secondly, note that ballasting, transfer of ballast, or fuel oil or fresh water to reduce or correct the list caused due to the shift of the cargo is of course an option however a caution here to note here is that there is a strong chance of cargo subsequently shifting to the other side and causing a greater list if you do use any of the ballasting or transfer of any fuel on the ship the third reason or third thing to note is most likely cargo shift will occur in adverse weather that is in heavy weather or bad weather. Remember that the crew will also be facing hazards if they are sent out to release or tighten the lashings on a moving or a shifting cargo. Retaining of overhanging cargo should also be considered if there is no danger to the crew. Then a jettisoning or intentional release of the cargo should be carefully considered as all the overhanging cargo is not likely to fall at once and it is unlikely to improve the situation. Finally, Damage to cargo may also occur if the propeller is turning when the cargo goes overboard. So actually this should be damage to the propeller, not damage to the cargo. But damage to the propeller may occur if the propeller is turning when the cargo is jettisoned overboard. Alright. Then the second reason cargo may shift on a timber carrying ship is ingress of water. So what will happen if suddenly ship starts to take water? It could be because of a hole in the ship's hull or because of some damage. And then the first thing that you should be doing is taking soundings of all the bilges and tanks including hold spaces and void spaces, bilge, engine room bilges, ballast tanks etc. If there is any unexplained water and that is detected and you don't know why it has happened use all available pumps to control the situation that is if the water ingress can be controlled then keep using the pumps to dry the space or empty out the space however if it cannot be controlled then consider the effect of bilging of the compartment on the vessel stability and whether it may lead to flooding of any other compartment if any one or two tanks are affected, consider ballasting tanks in the opposite side to counteract for the list, keeping in mind that the hull stresses and the effect on GM is managed well. In most of these cases, GM is likely to increase due to bilging.
so as the water will be added into the tank below the center of the gravity will start shifting towards the tank which will result in an increase of distance between the center of gravity and the ship's meter center and that will be an overall effect or will be an increase in the gm of the vessel the third reason a cargo may shift is angle of roll so if the ship has little or no gm then she will be very sluggish in her rolling and in returning to the upright condition if such behavior is observed prior to detection of list then the list is due to the ship having lolled to her one side in this case she may have no writing arm to return to the upright position now i have shown the angle of roll case the absence of the writing lever and the presence of the lighter lever in these diagrams here i will talk a little bit about each of these diagrams but i want you to pause the video at this point of time and draw some of these diagrams and make a note of what is happening in each of the diagrams so if i can label these diagrams diagram number one two and three you can see in the first diagram and i'll talk later about that as well there is a capsizing or a negative writing lever in the second one the meter center has shifted and it has coincided with the center of gravity so there is no writing lever and in this case the vessel is at angle of lol and in the third case you can see there is a writing lever present which is the gz this is a positive writing lever that can bring the ship back to its upright position if a list develops then i have also drawn a diagram showing you the unstable equilibrium and the angle of lol below where you can see the angle at which the angle of lol develops now this is called the curve of statical stability where the gz is plotted against various angles of heat there is a formula for that and all that is discussed in my videos on stability i will not go too much on that but here you can see that the ship has an initial negative gm but it can also develop a positive gm after the capsizing or the writing lever brings the ship back into the upright condition so initially when the ship has having an initial negative gm an angle of lol may develop but as it uprights then a positive gm may also develop an angle of lol but i'll talk more about this in the text here so as an unstable vessel heals more and more at some angle of heal km equals kg that you saw in figure number two if at angle of lol a vessel causes her to heal a little more km will increase to km2 and km2 becomes more than kg as you saw in figure number three thereby giving the vessel a small positive writing moment due to the gz as i mentioned before if at angle of lol a wave causes her to heal lesser the km decreases and becomes less than kg thereby a capsizing lever would be formed bringing her back to the angle of lol this has been shown in figure number one at angle of lol a vessel appears to behave as if the ship is in a stable equilibrium however the vessel is not safe in this condition and can capsize if heeled to a larger angle due to insufficient writing moment present so you have a positive writing moment but if it is insufficient for it to bring it back the vessel is in unsafe condition also may result in listing due to a shift of cargo at a large angle of heel so what can be the action in this case so in this case of course two options are available firstly adding weights to the lower part of the vessel or removing weights from the top this is to lower the kg so as the center of gravity shifts towards the lower part of the vessel like i said before the distance between the center of gravity and the meta center will increase and gm becomes positive and the value of the gm increases as well the second option is ballasting of double bottom tanks which is a preferable method of correcting the angle of lower so if there is a divided double bottom tank available on the ship make sure that you ballast the lower side of the tank first to immediately provide additional gm after this only the ballast the tank on the higher side however make sure you keep the free surface effect to a minimum by filling up tanks of least breadth all right as you know the free surface effect is calculated using the formula lb cube divided by 12 which gives you the moment of inertia and here you can see the breadth of the tank has the 
large role to play in calculation of the free surface effect. The third option is fresh water or bunkers may have to be transferred so that the tanks with the smallest moment of inertia are the ones that are left slack because higher will be the moment of inertia or tanks with the higher moment of inertia will also increase the free surface effect. The fourth option to correct the angle of loll is jettisoning cargo and doing that from the higher side and then the lower side. So jettisoning cargo as I have mentioned before is the intentional release of the cargo in the sea. This should of course be the last option. When using the ship's cargo gear, give allowances for the virtual shift of center of gravity of the weight to the crane head when the weight is on the hook thereby further reducing the vessel's gm so you can visualize it like this here if g is here initially and m is here and g is reducing as you pick up the cargo using the ship's crane the g will shift upwards and this may make the gm negative as you can see so g should always be below meta center or m for the gm to stay positive all right now before you jettison the cargo you have to make sure that you provide a notification of jettisoning the timber cargo when a whole or partial timber deck cargo is either jettisoned or lost accidentally the master of the vessel should send safety messages by all means to all ships in the vicinity and to the competent authorities at the first coastal point which can be contacted so by competent authorities we mean the flag state the next port if there is a narrow channel then the vts or the dpa the other owners the charters etc p and i so this is to inform of others of the danger to navigation and is required as per solas and i think it's chapter number five now such information should include timber details that is size and nature of the logs the position time and date when last observed again main causes of shifting of timber deck cargo can also be lashing becoming slack due to compaction of the cargo during the voyage or unsuitable devices used for tightening the lashing systems and or inadequate strength of the lashings it can also become because of cargo movement across hatch covers due to insufficient friction or because of inadequate strength of the uprights due to poor material properties and or excessive forces the cargo may also shift due to heavy rolling or pitching of the ship or impact from the heavy seas so since the focus here is on lashing let me talk a bit about the lashing requirements on timber cargo ships as well so here lashings are mainly of four types that are used on timber ships the first one is hog lashing they are normally used between the second and the third tier of the timber cargo and may be set hand tight between uprights the weights of the loaded upper tiers will further tighten them then we have the wire rope lashings and chain which may part over the stove from side to side and loop completely around the uppermost tier turn buckles are fitted in each lashing to provide means of tightening at sea chain lashings are passed over the stove and secured to pad eyes then we have wiggle wires wiggle wires are fitted like a shoelace to tighten the stove wires are passed through a series of snatch blocks held in place by foot wires again turn buckles are fitted to keep the lashings tight in terms of spacing of lashings uprights are placed 3 meters or less apart or other lashings are used for wires and chains for sawn timber if cargo height is less than or equal to 4 meter all lashings to be at least 4 3 meter apart however if cargo height is more than 4 meters make sure all lashings to be at least 1.5 meter apart for log poles and cans all lashings to be at least 3 meters apart and rounded steel angle pieces to be used at the top outboard edge of the stove. Now I will talk about the lashing strength and the other requirements for lashing. Here the braking strength should be greater than or equal to 133 kN. For proof load which equals to 0.4 of the braking strength not to show any permanent deformation. At load of 0.08 of the braking stress or braking strength 
elongation not to exceed 5%. Tightening devices to produce a load of greater than or equal to 27 kN in a horizontal and load more than 16 kN in a vertical stove. Half threads to be left after initial tightening of the cargo. At least 4 bulldog grips to be used about 15 cm apart. Uprights to be 3 meters or less apart and of steel or other strong material. Testings, marking, certificates as per national and international regulation. Virtual examination should be carried out every 12 months. Lashing plan to be provided and regular tightening during the voyage should be carried out with a note in the logbook. So make sure you carry out regular tightening of the cargo during the voyage and also make a note of it in the logbook. However, before entering a hold having timber cargo, make sure that you ventilate thoroughly by national, natural or mechanical means. Test the atmosphere at different levels for oxygen levels and from toxic vapors where suitable instrument is provided. If there is doubt about adequacy of ventilation or testing, make sure that you use the self-contained breathing apparatus and it should be worn by all persons that are entering the space. Now here I'll just correct a spelling. This should be natural and not national. So I don't want to confuse you guys. Finally, in terms of emergency procedures, when jettisoning of cargo is done to overcome the negative GM problem, the wiggle wire arrangement will provide a self-release system. Now using the self-release system is a good idea because it helps to keep the crew safe when the cargo suddenly releases from the deck and goes into the sea. So first of all, chain lashings are knocked off by the Senhouse slips. And again, I have drawn it here. It may not be a very good drawing. It's actually actually pretty ugly. So my apologies for that. But just to give you an idea of what it looks like. So you can see the Senhouse slip is shown here. And this is like a quick release system. And it is provided at the end of the wiggle wire, which is hove tight from a safe position. All you have to do is then remove the wire clamps and release wiggle wires from a predetermined safe position which helps you to release the cargo or rather jettison the cargo into the sea. However, that should be the last option and correction should be preferably made using the existing procedures or system that are there on the ship in terms of ballast. So I hope this video was useful to you guys for understanding uh, what are the reasons for a cargo shift in timber ships and what actions can be taken in the different scenarios. I'll see you guys soon with my next video and uh, thank you for watching.